slide shows the overview of our legislative framework of chemical management. So if you take a look at this slide, you can see upper part and lower part. The upper part is about source management. We use our national inventory to distinguish new chemical substance from existing chemical substance. The requirement for new chemical substance registration is a little bit complicated. I am not going to talk about that in detail today. But for existing chemical substance, um, now we have our national inventory. We call that TCSI. And several years ago, the Environmental Protection Administration it completed the phase one registration for existing chemical substance. Now, uh, the EPA announced a first batch of 106 packs priority existing chemicals to be, re uh, to be subject to uh, standard registration. And the lower part of the slide is about key management. So that means if the chemical substance uh, has been, been through the uh, registration, then based on the hazard adaptation or some specific direction or requirement by different agencies, then there are probably some measures to be followed. For example, under OSHA, it has the communication requirements. Uh, based, basically, it's GHS requirements. And it also has uh, chemical control banding. The abbrevi abbreviation is CCP. And also has priority management chemicals and control chemicals, etc. And under TCCCA, it's the abbreviation of the mother law, Taiwan EPA. It has different categories. We call that class 1, 2, 3, 4 of toxic chemical substance. And now, because the law just got amended, and it also added another category that's called concerned substance. So these are the key management under TCCSEA. So let's take a look at the legal framework under, under EPA. So the name of TCCSEA, before the amendment, it was TCCSEA. It's short for Toxic Chemical Substance Control Act. And it had five different chapters require different management measures about uh, chemical substance being identified as toxic chemical substances. But after the uh, January 16 of last year, it got uh, amended and the name was changed to Toxic and Concerned Chemical Substance Control Act. So we call that TCCSCA. And now it, uh, it changed from five chapters to eight chapters. And also uh, registration, it was separated now in a standalone chapter. And of course, it has individual chapters about the uh, concerned chemical substance. So several weeks ago, the EPA announced a um, authoritative list and a screening process. The list itself about concerned chemical substance has not yet been identified yet. Everybody's waiting, to, uh, waiting for that. But at least EPA has announced the screening process with some modifications. So uh, we use this slide to simplify the very, very complicated process. So at uh, the first slide, it's about the comp compilation of the list. So the EPA, uh, the Bureau, Toxic Chemical Substance Bureau, uh, they will enlist the substance from all possible sources, including all authoritative or evaluation lists <clears throat> from all around the world, and then make this, up, uh, make this list to observation list. This step, TCSB, is going to include substances with concerns due to their priority, toxic, environmental, or public consumption aspects from the compilation list and make the observation list. And to the next step, it's going to make a candidate list. In this list, uh, <clears throat> TCSB is going to involve uh, committees or stakeholders to, to see if the, those substances actually meet the criteria or the definition of toxic chemical substance one, class one, two, three, or four, or if the substance meet the definition of concerned chemical substance. And then the next step is going to, uh, to make the recommended, recommended toxic substance list. In this step, also TCSB will incorporate stakeholders' comments and to see uh, the handling details and socioeconomic or feasibility analysis to decide if the chemical substance should be really announced as a toxic chemical substance or a concerned substance. And after the evaluation, if the EPA or TCSB uh, 
consider all the possibility and decide that should be done, then uh, the chemical substance will be identified as toxic or considered chemical substance. Let's next move to GHS and workplace chemical safety. So our Ministry of Labor and its subsidiary agency, OSHA, encouraged industry to follow GRI 403 and SDGs to demonstrate corporate social responsibility. Now the Ministry of Labor identifies um, several aspects of SDGs that's related and highly connected with the workplace safety about chemical management. That includes uh, SDG 3, 4, 8, 9, 12, 6, and 17. And also the Ministry of Labor identifies some keywords and some action plans. And those keywords are health promotion, including management protection, illness prevention, and risk assessment, education, and that includes training and communication, um, micro or small, medium enterprise. And that's very specific and because uh, Taiwan, we have more than 98% of MSMEs to compose our industry profile. And capacity, capacity building, and of course, that's very important for the capacity building aspect of MSMEs as well. And regulatory development and the stakeholders' participations. These keywords and uh, the related action plans will be the 5 to 10 years goal and for our uh, Ministry of Labor to uh, connect with SDGs 2013. Let's take a look at the legal framework under OSHA. It's about workplace safety in regards of chemical management. So if we take a look at this pyramid structure, then we can see the base of everything is inventory and a GHS slash hazard communication. So uh, these two kinds of responsibility or obligations or regulations actually it requires importers and all the handlers and suppliers to be responsible. But for a higher tier of those different measures, including control banding and required exposure assessment or workplace monitoring and reporting for priority chemicals and application for permission for control chemicals, all this should be responsible, uh, so employers should be responsible for these measures. So basically for upper tier of this pyramid structure, uh, the OSHA requires basically reporting and basic exposure assessment and uh, control and require all of them should be done by the importers, handlers or suppliers. And also for like priority chemicals, actually the uh, industry report their data to the authority and the authority can use the data to decide uh, what substance need to be designated in uh, the list of control chemicals. So actually the stage of exposure and risk assessment is performed by the Ministry of Labor. For GHS and SDS and its disclosure issues, so GHS has been fully implemented in Taiwan for all hazardous substances or their mixtures. So the GHS regulation got revised in previous year in November and it was announced. So there are some major changes in here I list for uh, three of them. The first is about the language. Now in the GHS regulations article, it requires manufacturers, importers or suppliers they should provide SDS primarily in Chinese characters and, if necessary, in foreign languages that workers understand as supplement. And also, it also uh, now it requires SDS contents to include cast number in the table. And the third is the thing I am going to say a little bit more is about the uh, SDS CBI application, confidential business information. Now, in the revised regulation, it includes uh, cast number times for corrections and uh, Ministry of Labor's authority to revoke restrictions of applications. And now let's talk, talk about some experiences from the industry. Actually, our organization has been helping the industry bridging the new chemical management policies and their strategy to cope with all these changes about policies and regulations. From past and recent experiences, 
the companies we've been cooperating with, they all recognize the challenges of uh, complying with domestic and international regulations because they change all the time. So it is easier for them to be aware of future trend and respond in advance, comparing to chasing after the changes of different policies and regulations. So um, we summarize some aspect for the industries or company who have been co cooperating with what they really concern about and their strategies to uh, to respond this uh, the the, cha the challenges. First, and it's always the most important, is to identify the company's priority and scope. Do you want to fulfill the compliance only, or do you want to do more, or do you want to establish a systematic way to um, for future compliance? After you decide this, the next will be the scope. Is the whole thing to be focused on product safety only, or you also want to cover workplace safety? And for the case I will going to bring up to you, they are both for workplace safety. So the next step is to identify their strategy for exposure assessment and risk control in workplace. And for the uh, two companies um, we've been uh, a case study here, they want to not only to meet the basic compliance level, but also to consider for future development. So the strategy needs to include the measure for systematically complying with regulations and use that as the basis to plan for a prospective future. So what we did is to set up again this pyramid structure, but it's a different pyramid. The concept is like this. So the first and the basic level and the very important step is about data. The company needs to establish its own inventory for this assessment. So in this cases, the inventory should be included. Uh, so uh, include what they have been using in workplace. So based on the inventory, the next thing is to check the hazard information and all other relevant information for future or further assessment of these substances. A, good, a very good source is from SDS. However, uh, the consistency, the quality, and accuracy of SDS should be carefully examined. And that took a lot of effort. And the next move under this structure, this pyramid framework, is to use tiered approach to identify chemicals with risks. So if we take a look at this, we can see at the beginning, it takes, uh, you, you can use the tools or approach which takes uh, less time or uh, less money. Uh, uh, for example, as QRA, those same quantitative assessment tool. And then if you identify some chemical substance or procedure that with higher risks or um, risks that you, you, you have concern with, then maybe you can move a little bit forward to use quantitative risk assessment tool. And uh, you can combine this source and also to do something like environmental monitoring uh, using this different approach to quantify the uh, actual exposure amount and then compare the hazard to do this uh, risk assessment. So the tops of this pyramid will be identifying your risks. So after identifying the risks, the next move is always to uh, to move to if there is any uh, risk mitigation approach to actually be conducted. So um, so for our company, we then provide suggestions of risk mitigation and the observation of management gaps. Once the company has this procedure built in, if they want or if they expect to move to more sustainable direction or expand the scope. They can use the data to see if they there's any substance they want to target for substitution. So let's move to our last slide is the next move and our observations and suggestions. So first thing uh, from the beginning of the talk is about the concerned substance. So management of concerned substance and the list itself will be released hopefully soon. So pay attention to it. And also pay attention to the activities of the authority, the authority here, I mean the EPA, regarding the 106 PPEX. 
because now uh, the official website still hasn't released the uh, official version of the guidance, but we also expect that to be released very soon. And there may be some um, some changes in the official guidance. And uh, we hope or expect that that's at least what the EPA said the previous year, more packs may be coming. And also we can, uh, we need to be prepared for the enforcement. Uh, that includes aftermarket inspection or registration compliance. Um, so last year also the EPA has conducted several on-site visits to check the registration compliance. So this year and the further year, that may be their, um, their activity to move on. And uh, the Ministry of Labor and EPA, they start to evaluate substance to make decision. And not only them, now also like the Ministry of Economic Affairs, it also puts emphasis on products evaluation and regulations. And uh, also, like uh, pesticides, it, it, uh, it's also moving forward to the labeling requirements as well. So basically, the suggestion to the industry, move, for, move from compliance to perspective. And that's all about my presentation. Thank you so much.